Don't judge a book by its cover. I'm not much of a man by the light of day, but by night I'm one hell of a lover. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. <laughs> Let me show you around, maybe play your sound. You look like you're both pretty groovy. Or if you want something visual that's not too abysmal, we could take it in a Steve Reeves movie. Well, you got caught with a flat. Well, how about that? Well, babies, don't you panic. By the light of the night, it'll all seem all right. I'll get you a satanic mechanic. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Ha <laughs> Why don't you stay for the night? Or maybe a bite? I could show you my favorite obsession. I've been making a man with blonde hair and a tan, and he's good for relieving my tension. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. Hey, hey, I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. <laughs> so, come up to the lab and see who's on the slab. I see you shiver with anticipation. But maybe the rain isn't really to blame. So I'll remove the cause. <laughs> But not the symptom. Thank you.
bases, cover my bases. I do what I have to, smile till it hurts, baby. Wear short I skirts, baby. that Oprah is totally putting the pounds back on. I love it! Here's why. Because she was so superior when she took it off, right? She had it all figured out. I get it, people! I got it! Remember? And she got really tiny for a week there. Remember? Like, she's wearing, like, the little dresses and stuff. Because you know my joke is that I love her, but she thinks she's Jesus. And when she gets a paper cut, she's like, oh, stigmata. <laughs> no, Oprah, it's not stigmata. Yes, it, no, it's a paper cut. No, but I, no, Oprah. <laughs> Every pound she gains back for me is like a hug from Jesus. <laughs> and by the way, how much fun is the Tom Cruise meltdown? One of my favorite things about the Tom Cruise meltdown is that he's so crazy, the gays don't want him anymore. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, where are my gays at? Where are my women, lesbians, or otherwise women? Where are my straight guys? I don't speak your language, I'm sorry. I, I speak fluent gay. I took two years in high school. But I love how the gays just don't even want them anymore. They don't care. It's all about Jill and Hall. Jill and Hall. They all want Jill and Hall. Yes. They all want Jill and Hall because of the Bareback Mountain. And I also love how the gay guys only want hot guys to be gay, right? They want Jill and Hall, they want Ledger, they want Colin Farrell. Here's what you'll never hear from one of the gays. Oh girl, don't be naive. Don't tell me you don't know about Miss Jean Hackman. Ooh! All right, so let's just get right to the red carpet, shall we? So I got canned from the red carpet. Fired, 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 in no uncertain terms. Yes, that's right, I was fired. And I'm owning it. So Star Jones also got canned, but of course she's not admitting it. <laughs> she's such an ass, you guys. Um, you know, so I did it, and I really had a lot of fun. And um, there was an incident. I thought it would be fun to come up with like a running joke that I could do with everybody. And my, one of my favorite things is when they give messages of hope. So you'll see some like dumbass at some movie premiere just looking at the camera on Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood or something and they'll be like, I want to give a message of hope to the troops. Good luck to all of you out there in the Republic of Chad. Like they don't even know where the war is, right? They can't find Iraq on a map, like none of that shit, right? So, one of my favorite examples of celebrities giving messages of hope was when Ben Affleck went to rehab. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. We've lost over 2,000 of our own in Iraq, but Ben Affleck going to rehab is the bravest thing you've ever heard of. Brave, 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 brave. Okay, so, I thought it would be funny to, to make up a rumor about a celebrity going to rehab celebrity give that person bogus messages of hope? <laughs> All right, so I thought, okay, who's the least likely person to ever go to rehab, right? So I thought, well, I can't, I can't say, oh, um, have you heard Lindsay Lohan went to rehab? Because 
you know, TikTok. And, um, <laughs> no, I, I know Lindsay has lost a lot of weight recently, and it's because of diet and Pilates uh, and crack. Um, <laughs> All right, who's the least likely person? What's the name of that little kid missing her tooth from I Am Sam? Dakota Fanning. <laughs> that is funny. Dakota Fanning in rehab, walking into promises, stop me before I stop myself. Like, come on. Okay, so I'm kind on the red carpet, and one celebrity after another is coming up to me, and I would say, um, I don't know if you heard, but... <laughs> Little Dakota Fanning was admitted to rehab this morning for <laughs> drug and alcohol abuse. Do you have a message of hope? And one celebrity after another knew I was kidding. It was really, really funny. And Sean Hayes from Will and Grace was the best. He goes like this, good luck Dakota, you don't want to go south. South Dakota! <laughs> funny, right? I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. I was so proud of myself. Um, until... The next day, when the lawyers started calling, I get a call, and one of my attorneys is like, well, you know, um, the E! Channel is very upset with you, and the E! Channel says, okay, we really need you to issue an apology. And I said, okay, here's my apology. You'd have to be a idiot to not know I was kidding. <laughs> Suck my
diamond dance. Aren't I even worth a broken chance? Tonight. Cruising on an ocean liner to places I long to see. Well, with my champagne taste and your beer bottle pocket. Don't forget to write me when you get there in your rowboat. When you paddle across the sea without me. <laughs> dining on caviar and pheasant with descendants of royalty well with my champagne taste and your beer bottle pocket I'll be having pheasant while you're dining with the peasants dunking donuts in a diner without me you said you have ambition Make my dream come true. Well, brother, you just keep right on wishing, and all of my dreams will come true without you. Do you see me in a Jaguar with all the accessories, and one of those accessories is you? <laughs> well, with my champagne taste and your beer bottle pocket. Take back your Jaguar, accessories, etc., and drive back into your dreamland without me. <laughs> and if I wanted diamonds, you'd offer me breakfast at Tiffany's and luncheon at Cartier's, you'd recommend. Well, with my champagne taste and your beer bottle bucket, you will have to work on something better than a zircon because your diamonds are this girl's worst friends. <laughs> you said you'd promise me anything to make my life a feast. You 
didn't give me anything. Not even arpege, you beast. And it wouldn't surprise me if a lady like Kadiva had someone like you to give her the stall. But with her champagne taste and your beer bottle pocket, when she couldn't get those dresses, she just let down all her dresses and forgot she was the lady of the all. <laughs> so if you want me to be a part of your permanent employ, before my champagne fizzles, come up with a real McCoy. Show me you can separate the man from the boy. And bring me a constant life of champagne taste. told a couple of friends of mine this truly terrific, absolutely true story. And it just so happened that these friends of mine are songwriters. And guess what happened? Right? Truly terrific, absolutely true song. Gather around, I've got a story to tell about a Manhattan lady that I know very well. She lives at Five Riverside. Her name is Shirley DeVore. And she traveled round the world to meet the guy next door. Well, there was trouble inside apartment 29E. Cause Shirley's mother and dad were as upset as can be. They said, we hate to complain, dear, and we don't like to grouse. But you're nearly 32, you should get out of the house. You gotta ring them bells, you gotta ring them bells. You gotta make them sing and really ring them bells. It's such a happy thing to hear them ting a ling. You gotta ring them bells. Well, Shirley was 31, which she was loath to admit. And she had never been loved, which didn't thrill her a bit. And so she sat and she thought, she thought for hours on end, and said, I'll go to Chase Manhattan where I got me a friend. And so she borrowed a called TWA and told her mother and dad that she was up and away. I'm gonna travel the continent in a month, maybe two, and haul me home a hus if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> 
You gotta ring them bells. You gotta ring them bells. You gotta make them sing and really ring them bells. It's such a happy thing to hear them ting a ling. You gotta ring them bells. She met a London at first, but they did not hit it off. Cause every time she approached, he got a bronchial cough. And so she went to Madrid and met a handsome senor. But he liked to throw the bowl and he was no matador. She also bombed out in Brussels, in Mallorca and Rome. So someone said, try Dubrovnik, dear, before you go home. Cause it's the kind of a town where you'll be likely to fall. And all the Tony Cognoscenti find the Balkans a ball. You gotta ring them bells, you gotta ring them bells You gotta make them sing and really ring them bells It's such a happy thing to hear them ting a ling You gotta ring them bells And so she went to Dubrovnik and the very first day She met a guy on the beach took her reason away. Yes, it was love at first sight and quite a beautiful scene. She said, my name is Cheryl DeVore. He said, I'm Norm Saperstein. She said, are you from New York? He said, that can't be denied. I've got a swell junior free at number five, Riverside. Five? Five Riverside Drive in New York? That's where you live? That's, that's where I live. Five? Are you sure? As if that wasn't enough, for Shirley thought she'd gone deaf when he told her his apartment there was 29F. <laughs> Guess she was E, he was F, and they had not even met until she traveled the world to Yugoslavia yet. He'd always been right next door, and she would never have known if she hadn't tried to prove Nick she might still be alone well there's a moral to learn from little Shirley DeVore who had to borrow a vow to find a lover next door you girls who live in apartments don't just stare at the wall open up the door and hurry out in the hall Miss Dion Warwick. The moment I wake up, this thought I put on my makeup, I say a little bit for you. While combing my head now, and you wonder what dress you wear, I say a little bit.
Just how good it's been And I know 